Hello. Um, today I wanted to talk about a, uh, a new movie that I uh, got uh, not too long ago. And um, uh, <clears throat> mentioned in the last like, uh, kind of a sort of update video for movies that I got. Um, which is uh, <clears throat> Licorice Pizza, which is uh, Paul Thomas Anderson's latest film. Uh, which is inspired by, uh, in part by the uh, life of Gary G uh, Getzman, who was a child actor, just like the character of Gary Valentine, played by Cooper Hoffman, who's uh, Philip Seymour Hoffman's uh, son. And Philip Seymour Hoffman, you know, uh, uh, collaborated with Paul Thomas Anderson on many of his films. Um, uh, from his second film all the way up to the master um, the only film between them that he was not in that Paul Thomas Anderson made was There Will Be Blood and you know, Philip Seymour Hoffman uh, was an excellent actor um, he passed away in 2014 um uh, his son in this does a really good job. Elena Heim uh, plays uh, uh, Elena Kane. Um, and the two in this film really does follow uh, these characters' relationship. You know, Gary's like a, you know, he's a, you know, a child actor, but then, you know, and she works as a... Uh, uh, photographer taking uh, pictures of kids like in high school and school stuff and then the two of them eventually um, work together uh, when he decides to start a uh, waterbed company and uh, throughout uh, this film they, we see uh, sort of the different things that goes on in uh, their lives you know he's you know, he's, it shows how Gary is sort of a uh, entrepreneurial, entrepreneur at heart, in a way. And um, Elena and him, they have an interesting relationship. There are many moments where they're, they're very in love, despite the, like the 10-year age difference between the two of them. Like, she's 25, he's 15 when they first meet. Which, well, and throughout the most of the film, though he does turn 16 in the film, this movie takes place in 1973, uh, where also, like, the there is a shortage in uh, gas and oil uh, by the time the film is uh, concluding. And throughout the film, uh, they encounter many interesting people, one of which is a, a real-life producer, uh, John Peters, uh, played by uh, Bradley Cooper, and he isn't in this as much as one would. I would kind of, I would think. The way I heard about this, it was uh, uh, it made it seem like he, since you know they were in the uh, entertainment world, and of course you know uh, John Peters is. Uh, was in a relationship with Barbara Streisand, you know, he was a hairdresser who then uh, produced the various films for her and then continues to produce movies, including uh, Tim Burton's Batman, for instance, uh, among other films. And um, Sean Penn plays uh, a character who's, who's an actor who was in, like, based off of, inspired by uh, William Holden. Uh, Benny Safdie plays a politician who's like a closeted homosexual. And it's, it's interesting how all these characters on all these, like these two characters meet all these interesting people. And just how this all sort of like shows the, the dynamics of their characters, like in their, just the relationship. And it's just, it's a very interesting movie very different. I think even one could say perhaps even odd. Um, 
Paul Thomas Anderson cites uh, uh, an, infl an, an influence in the making of this, uh, aside from it being, I guess, uh, based off of uh, Gary Gitzman's uh, various uh, <clears throat> stories, including, you know, from actor to uh, waterbed salesman, and then later on, a pinball salesman, or p pinball salesman, he's a, he's, he has a, it turns his place into a place where people can go play ping pong, or pinball, or ping pong, I don't know, maybe that'd be an interesting place, but, to have, but, you know, it, that happened to the real life g guy in, in the film, he goes from actor to then waterbed salesman, and then, uh, has his place have a bunch of uh, uh, pinball machines and sort of like a little arcade with the 70s. And uh, uh, as a waterbed salesman, he goes and uh, meets, he encounters uh, John Peters, who then threatens to uh, kill him, but also kill uh, his his family, his brother, right in he's going to kill his brother uh, right in front of him. Uh, and he's going to make sure he watches it. That's what John Peters tells him. You know, because, you know, he, they're, the two of them, they're from the streets. Which, if you uh, heard about Kevin Smith talking about how he was going to, he wrote Superman Lives for John Peters. That was supposed to be produced and directed by Tim Burton, but that film never happened. You know, John Peters told him. That the two of them are from the streets because they get Superman, and um, that's it's that story is very interesting. You'll probably find it on YouTube if you've never heard of that. But you know, the, Kevin Smith saying that line is what inspired that line for uh, uh, John Peters in the film to tell uh, Gary. And it's it's just interesting and in how the two of them like. They sort of like go on in different directions, such as a uh, uh, like a uh, working for a, uh, you know uh, this uh, a politician running for office. Uh, it's just uh, like volunteering and just it, it's it's a very fascinating film it's very interesting it's it's one of those movies where it's like it's better to see than you know first if you haven't seen it it might be a little hard to, to, to describe exactly what all happens without sort of spoiling things um like very specific plot points i don't really want to do that but in a way it's sort of like as it says on the back from like a reviewer it's like a Watching life with all the boring parts cut out and like watching a movie with all the phony parts cut out. It's, I think in a way that does sort of describe that, this film. It's very interesting. It's very, um, fascinating. And, uh, for this Blu-ray, there's a camera tests, a Fat Bernie's commercial, handmade scene, or handman scene, and, uh, behind the scenes look at the making of the film and I know I did this uh, last time when I got it but you know I, this does come with a poster which is a uh, very uh, very interesting and really cool I was like I can pinball and, uh, just like it has, uh, which is sort of like the cover, except this has a little more. And then on the back, it's got like a bunch of pictures and other, other stuff. I don't know if every single uh, Blu-ray of this has posters. Um, mine did. I got mine at Target for about ten bucks. My the movie itself was like ten bucks. 
And uh, I heard some people talk about this. Some really enjoy it. Some don't like it so much. Some think it's all right. I think it's fine. Yeah, this is, includes limited edition poster, and I don't know if... You know, it doesn't say it's limited to however many, but yeah. But this movie is a pretty good film. Uh, if you haven't seen it and you see it on sale, or then again, it's been out, it, this came out in 2021. So it's been out for uh, at least a year now. Uh, at least a full year. Um, but, you know, if you see this and it's, you know, like 10 bucks, like, or I got this. I think that'd be fine. Uh, I did get, you know, it's not too expensive. It's something that I think is worth a watch at least once, especially if you're a fan of Paul Thomas Anderson, uh, who made also Boogie Nights, and in addition to There Will Be Blood and the Master, and uh, Punch Drunk Love with Adam Sandler, um, Inherent Vice also. So uh, if you like any of those films, I think this would be worth a watch at least um once just to see what it's like it's not at all a bad film uh, the acting here is really good especially you know uh, cooper hoffman this was his first film and he did a very good job um yeah that's uh you know not much else to say pretty good film um not one of my absolute favorite uh, Paul Thomas Anderson movies. My, you know, I will say that it's not at the top. You know, I still think you know films like uh, There Will Be Blood and The Master are uh, uh, better, in my opinion. Uh, but everyone's different. So as Tom Waits, yeah, there he is. He's like a director in this film. So. Very interesting movie, for sure. I uh, did not find it dull, which I think is always a good thing for a film. It's, I think it's bad when a movie is dull or boring or something, you know, because that kind of just, you know, just lower, lowers your overall enjoyment. Unless there's something that's supposed to be deliberately dull, just so, like if it's done on purpose, which doesn't really happen much, but I guess probably find a film where it goes from dull to really exciting um but you know that doesn't happen too much but this was a pretty interesting film it just keeps going and going and going until it just ends um and yeah american graffiti and uh fast times at ridgemont high were uh influences for this film and I think you can really see that when watching this movie. But, uh, yeah. This is a really good film. Uh, if you see it streaming or on sale, or probably not on sale anymore, but just pretty affordable, it's worth a watch and worth picking up. That's uh, my opinion, at least. So, yeah. Have you seen this movie? Do you like it? Do you dislike it? Why or why not? And I hope all of you are, uh, you know, doing well. Hope you're all having a great day. Hope all of you are have had a great week. Uh, hope you all have a great weekend. And uh, see you all next time. Take care.